Let me address the question of skander.qt YouTube channel. Which is more economical and efficient? A singly reinforced beam or a doubly reinforced beam? So let us first define the word economical and efficient. Now, two factors are important in the design and analysis, specifically design, that is cost and performance. So, an economical and efficient section is one with a low cost but high performance. When we say performance, number one, it must have the strength. Let us talk about flexure. How do we design a beam for flexure? The MU actual must be less than MU capacity for it to be safe. So the actual moment is computed based on the load. 1.2 moment due to dead load plus 1.6 moment due to live load. If there is an earthquake load, then we also include that. But let me just limit the discussion to dead load and live load combination. The MU capacity is based on the section provided, the size of the section, B and D, and the number of reinforcement and the size of the reinforcement. Q in this formula is equal to rho Fy over F C prime. So, Q actually is a parameter indirectly representing the row. The bigger the row, the bigger the Q and vice versa. The bigger the Q, the bigger the row. Okay. Now, in designing, the first is to decide what depth are you going to use. Normally, the architect will have a suggested limitation for D. But his suggestion must fit with this minimum depth for non-pre-stressed beam. These are the minimum, uh, minimum depth that is required by ACI. For illustration purposes, let us say that we have, let us say L is 8 meters simply supported. So, this is the simple support. So, 8 divided by 16, that is 0.5. So, the minimum H is 0.5 or 500 mm. Just for simplicity of computation and analysis, let us say that our D prime here, from the bottom of the beam to the center of the reinforcement, let us say this is 100. So, from center of reinforcement to this will be 400. So, with this example, our minimum D will become 400. Why would I want to minimize my D? There are various reasons, but the principal reason is for economy. Now, then we decide what would be our B. B is not so much as critical in the selection as RD. But based on recommendation, the ideal B must be around one half 0.5 to 0.65 of D. So let us say for simplicity, I choose B is D over 2. Meaning in our example, if this is 400, this will be 200. So knowing this and knowing this, we'll be able to solve our Q, right? Once we know Q, you feed here, this is Q, we'll be able to solve our row. Correct? Now, once we know our row, our row is equal to AS over BD. So therefore, our AS which is n times the bar diameter of choice n over 4 
diameter of bar squared must be equal to rho bd. Rho bd. We'll be able to solve our n. We'll be able to get the number of bars. This rho required by flexure must not exceed rho max. Your rho max here is equal to 0 0.75 rho balance. Rho required must not exceed rho max. This is not allowed. What will be the solutions? One solution to this is to lower this. Rho required will be lowered by lowering your Q. Q will be lowered by increasing your D and or increase your B. You continue increasing D and B until such time that you get a rho required equal or less than rho max. That will allow you to use a singly What if due to architectural reasons, B and D cannot be increased? The solution to that is using a doubly reinforced beam. So meaning, we can meet a certain strength requirement both by singly reinforced beam and by doubly reinforced beam technique. So let us compare a singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam. Now, for a certain MU actual, I can match that with MU capacity both using singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam. So, for a given or known MU desired or strength, both X, which will have a lower cost. Same strength because they have the same MU capacity matching the MU actual, so same strength, but which will have bigger cost. Look here. The singly reinforced beam will require higher D, higher B. Higher D, higher B, bigger volume of concrete. Bigger volume of concrete means bigger size of forms, correct? Bigger size of forms, bigger volume of concrete, bigger weight, bigger cost in scaffolding, and bigger cost of form works. So, increase in cost. In here, increase in rebars. Okay? But the gen generally, increasing the rebars will be cheaper than increasing the forms, the labor, the scaffoldings, formworks, right? And the cost of concrete, of course. So, generally speaking, this will be higher in cost than the doubly reinforced beam. So, this is lower in cost. So, I would say that if strength is the only reason or only factor in the performance, then doubly reinforced will be more efficient, more economical than the singly reinforced beam. However, strength is not the only factor. Another factor in defining performance is the what we so-called serviceability. And when we talk of serviceability, specifically, we're talking of deformation or for beam, it is deflection. So for this one, you have high deflection.
this singly reinforced beam solution has higher D, higher B, higher moment of inertia, lower or smaller deflection. So why is it that deflection is part of the performance? Simply because you don't want a beam that is excessively deflecting. So the sag is too much to be for you to be comfortable, you to feel safe. It's not enough that it is safe, it must really look safe. Okay? Also, also, it's not convenient to walk on a, a curved surface. Do you get it? Look, if the finish of this is porcelain tile with an excessively deflected beam, also that decreases I will the clear cut. height below. Right? Excessive deflection is not only critical for the tile's finish, not only critical for the clearance, that excessive deflection is also harmful to our piping system, plumbing system, electrical system. It could damage our piping joints or the pipe themselves. So, including the water line. Okay? So, this question cannot really be answered correctly if, unless we have the detail of everything. Okay? So, just remember in designing, according to most authors and designers, structural engineers, a doubly reinforced beam is an impractical design. This belongs to theory only, but in practice, the practical means applicable to practice. So, in practice, this probably reinforced beam is really impractical because of its excessive deflection. This is only here for the purposes of theory. But in practice, I repeat, practically all beams Reinforced concrete beams are designed as a singly reinforced beam. Okay? So, me as a designer, I only use a maximum balance of... And not the raw maximum, which is 0 0.75 raw balance. Okay? Because at 0.75 of raw balance, our deflection is already excessive. I hope I answered the question fully. Encourage your classmates, your friends, your family to enroll in our online review. We are really advocating the online review because I really do believe that, on the, uh, that online review is most beneficial to practically everyone. We do our online review the way you are seeing the lecture here.